this video, we're going to go over logical symbols and what they represent and how you can use them in mathematics. So you can use this video kind of like a reference point for uh, whenever you have a question, when you see a symbol that you may not know what it's supposed to do or what it's supposed to represent. So uh, the very first one we're going to go with is uh, the logical equivalence symbol. And so that is drawn with three bars going uh, parallel and you could draw variables or something like that to say that x is logically equivalent to y. Uh, the way this can work in terms of uh, an actual function, if you wrote out something such as x plus 5 equals y plus 2, you can say that that is logically equivalent to x plus 3 equals y. And the reason you can do that is because if you actually take each one of the sides of this equation, you would see that you get x plus 3 equals y and you would see that that is logically equivalent to x plus 3 equals y. A good rule of thumb here is if the answer is the same given the identical input, then they are going to be logically equivalent. So uh, that is the first one we're going to go over. The next one we're going to go over is the negation symbol. And so with the negation symbol, what that is, is there's a few different ways that you can write it um, that you may see. This is a popular one. You may also see that because that can actually be uh, entered into a keyboard easily and then uh, you may also see it as an exclamation uh, mark. A lot of the professors and the people I've worked with uh, will pick this one, for some reason or another, it just seems to be a very popular one, maybe because it's easier to write on a chalkboard. And so this one's uh, pretty basic. Negation just means that it's false. So if you say, see someone write negation A, what that's going to equal is that A is false. So that one's nice and easy. Okay, the next one that we're going to go with is going to be the logical conjunction. And what that simply means is it's saying the statement and, essentially. So, we'll create that with the symbol like this. It looks like a triangle without a bottom. And so you could do something saying like x conjunction y and then this statement if you take the statement as a whole you can say that this statement is true if and only if and that's how you write if and only if x and y are both true so in order for this statement to be true both of them have to be uh, true. If one of them is false, then it means the statement itself is false. And that's usually what you're going to use uh, logical conjunction for. Okay, and the next one is logical disjunction. And that's represented by that triangle, except it's now upside down. So you could do something like P or, and that's the way you'd say it, just P or Q. And if you remember with uh, our conjunction that combined them, disjunction allows for it to be either or. So in this case, the statement P or Q can be true if either P is true or Q is true. And that makes it nice for when you're needing to uh, give different options when you're creating an equation. So if P is true and Q is false, 
the entire statement can still be true. If you uh, use, com if you're in computer science or do a lot of programming, uh, you'll use this a lot uh, when you're building out applications. Now, in logical conjunction, or I'm sorry, disjunction, that is, uh, if both of the uh, sides are true, it can still work. What we're going to look at now is exclusive disjunction. And what this means is that only one side can be true. So the way this works is it's a circle and it looks kind of like a bullseye. And so in this case, we'll do P or Q, but for this entire statement to be true, only one side is actually going to be picked to be the true one. So we'll say that P is equal to true. Whereas with the logical disjunction, this would have uh, this would have worked if either of them were true. That's not the case uh, with exclusive disjunction. And there are a number of programming languages where this uh, where it by default it actually uses exclusive disjunction. So it's important to know that when you're researching the language's semantics. Um, okay, next one we're going to look at is universal quantification. And that has a upside down triangle, but it looks more like a upside down capital A. And what this means is it means the easiest way of saying is for all or for each. And so you could, uh, this is going to be used a lot when you're building answer sets or uh, you're using set theory or anything like that. So uh, you could say that. Something like uh, x is true um, for all sets s1 and s2. Something like that. Uh, this obviously isn't a connected to mathematical equation, so it doesn't really uh, make sense, but you will see this quite a bit. And it essentially means that something is true or something exists inside of a number of different sets or grabs a different uh, number of sets or um, uh, parameters. Uh, the next one is going to be the existential quantification and all that means is that there exists and so that is represented by a backwards looking E and when you say this, what you're saying is that there's at least one element, if you're using, once again, set theory, uh, there's at least one element inside the set. So if you want to say uh, L is an element inside S1, then S1 would need to contain L along with any other parameters. So you can see it's right there in the set. So that just means that there's an element in the set containing that element that you're selecting. Okay, and the next one that we're gonna go with is going to be the uniqueness quantification, and that one is very similar to the one we just looked at with existential quantification, except as an exclamation point right after it. And so all that means, the only difference is that there's only one item or one element that exists inside that set. So taking the example that we just used where L is an element inside of S1. This would not be true if S1 contained two instances of L. This is, that's not something that would work. In this case, it only is looking for a single uh, set or for it only to be included once in that set or in the array or whatever you're looking at for the data structure. 
okay, next one we're looking at is going to be entails, and that is another logical symbol that is used a lot in set theory, or if you're doing a answer set programming. And so we could say if we have a program called pi, and pi has multiple answer sets. So pi has answer set S1, and inside S1 it has P, Q, and R. And in its second set, it has P, X, and Y. We can say that pi entails P, because you can see right here that P is found in both of the answer sets. And so we can say that pi entails p. Uh, the other thing you can also say is that p is a consequence of pi, which just essentially means that p is in every possible answer set of the program. Okay, and the next one we're going to look at is going to be uh, intersection. And so intersection is uh, something that gets used a lot in logic. And so we'll look at x intersects y. And so what this essentially means is that if you take two sets where x represents set 1 and y represents set 2 and if you're looking at which items in those sets where there's overlap, essentially. And so uh, if we take x to represent set 1 and set 1 equals a, b, c, and then y equals set 2, and in set 2 we have B, C, D, then the X intersect Y would result in the set containing B and C. And the reason for that is because B is found here, and here, and here, and here. Another really good way of uh, looking at it, and it's one of the more popular ways that I've seen, is actually looking at it using a Venn diagram. And so I'm going to just draw a quick one right here just to show how that intersection works. So we can draw, let this represent X and let this represent Y right here. This area is where the intersection is. So that's right where that occurs. So all the elements found in that intersection is exactly uh, is exactly what that program would result in. Okay, and the very last one we're going to look at is going to be union. And so with this one, we'll say x union y. And all this is, is it's very simple. It's just adding. And so uh, we'll say that if x is represented by or has set 1, and inside set 1 we have a, b, c, and y is represented by set 2. And set 2 has D, E, F. Then the result of X union Y would be a set that contains A, B, C, D, E, F. And that's it. Good job if you went through that. Uh, just Feel free to just use this video as a reference point when you're needing to look up what 
a logical symbol is. It takes a little while for a lot of people to get used to it, but uh, you will eventually get it and it will make sense. Uh, it, it does work very well when you're trying to create mathematical equations uh, for shorthand and for being able to kind of have a universal language that everyone can understand and know the meaning of. So please let me know if you have any questions at all regarding this lesson.